We are facing an exponential threat. If you have a linear response to an exp exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That, in a nutshell, is the issue. I'm not paying attention. Do we worry more about what, what name somebody called someone else than whether AI will destroy humanity? That's insane. As the algorithms and the hardware improve, that digital intelligence will exceed biological intelligence by a substantial margin. It's obvious. Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We've evolved to think about things that are very close to us, near term, to, to be upset with other humans, and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. Um, but then in recent decades, recent, just really in the last century, we had nu nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt uh, civilization. Um, Excuse me, how could AI mm -hmm. destroy civilization? You know, it would be something in the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but we might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens became much smarter than other primates, I pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They're just in the way. It's just, it's definitely going to be outside of human control. Not necessarily bad, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily bad. It's just, it's just outside of human control. Now, the thing that's going to be tricky here is that it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting. In fact, it will be used as a weapon. Um, so the the on, the the on ramp to serious AI. The danger is going to be more humans using it against each other. I think most likely that'll be the danger. Yeah. You could make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and. Uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed. Right now. People do. Probably a bigger risk than, than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda uh, that would not seem like propaganda. So these are deep fakes. Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections, artificial intelligence. Just hones the message, hones the message, check, looks, at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. Within milliseconds, it, could, it can um, adapt its message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are not people. Like, how do you, how do you know it's a person, not a person? I mean, most of the movies and TV featuring AI, they don't describe it in quite the way it's likely to actually take place. But I think you just have to consider, like, even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what is that? What job do we have? Yeah, just like even... But that, that's the benign scenario. Benign, yeah. benign scenario, the AI can do any job that a human can, but better. Yeah. That's the benign scenario. Uh, humanity. So it's very important that we have the advent of AI uh, in a good way. That, that uh, is something that um, if, you, if you could look into the crystal ball and, and see the future, you would, li you would like that outcome. Um, because it is something that could go, um, could go wrong um, as we've talked about many times, um, and so we really need to make sure it goes right. Um, that's, that's, I think, AI, work, working on AI and making sure it's a great future, that's, that's the most important thing, I think, right now, um, the most pressing item. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads, by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far.
So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. So the, the rate of improvement is really dramatic. And we have to figure out some way to ensure that the advent of digital superintelligence is one which is symbiotic with humanity. I think that's the single biggest existential crisis that we face and the, and the most pressing one. I met with, all, I, I was at a meeting of all 50 governors and talked about just AI danger and I talked to everyone I could. No one seemed to realize where this was going. The singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially greater than that of a human brain. Showing that the advent of AI is good, or at least we try to make it good, seems like a smart move. But we're way behind on that. Yes, we're not paying attention. Do we worry more about what, what name somebody called someone else than whether AI will destroy humanity? That's insane. We we're like children in a playground. Intelligence will keep advancing. The only thing that would matter from advancing is, the, is something that puts civilization into stasis or destroys civilization. Then we have to figure out what is a world that would, we would like to be in where there is this uh, digital superintelligence. The best of the available alternatives that I can come up with, and maybe somebody else can come up with a better approach uh, or, or better outcome, is that uh, we achieve democratization of AI technology, meaning that uh, no one company or a uh, small set of individuals has control over advanced AI technology. I think that that's very dangerous. Um, it could also get stolen by somebody bad, you know, like some evil dictator or country could send their intelligence agency to go steal it and gain control. It just becomes a very unstable situation, I think, if you've got any um, any incredibly powerful AI. Um, you just don't know who's who's going to control that. So it's not as I think that the risk is that the AI would develop a will of its own right off the bat. I think it's more it's, uh, the concern is that some, someone um, may use it in a way that is bad. Um, or, or, and even if they weren't going to use it in a way that's bad, that somebody could take it from them and use it in a way that's bad. That, that I think is quite a big danger. So I think we must have democratization of AI technology and make it widely available. Um, and that's you know the reason that obviously uh, uh, you, me, and the rest of the team, uh, you know, created OpenAI um, was to help uh, with the democracy, help help spread out um, AI technology so it doesn't get concentrated in the hands of a few. So it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very very carefully. Um, very, very carefully. My motivation, which was, you know, kind of what, what, what do we do about AI? The AI is uh, very, very benevolent. Then how do we even go along for the, go along for the ride? How do we, we participate? In, in order to solve uh, full self-driving uh, properly, you actually just, you have to solve real world AI. Yeah, you because know, you say like, what are the road networks designed to, to work with? They're designed to work with a biological neural net, our brains, and with vision, our eyes. Um, and so in order to make it work uh, with computers, you basically need uh, to solve real world AI uh, and, and vision. Because we need cameras and silicon neural nets uh, in order to have, to, to have self-driving work for a system that was designed for eyes and biological neural nets. I guess when you put it that way, it's sort of like quite obvious that the only way to solve full self-driving is to solve real-world uh, AI and sophisticated vision. It took me a while to sort of realize this, that, that, that in order to solve self-driving, you really need to solve real-world AI. Um, and at the point at which you solve real-world AI for a car, which is really a robot on four wheels, uh, you can then generalize that to a robot on legs as well. The, the two hard parts, I think, like it's not, it, it, obviously companies like Boston Dynamics have shown that it's possible to make uh, uh, quite compelling, sometimes alarming robots. Right. Um, you, you know, so, so this is, from a sensor as an actuator standpoint, it's certainly uh, 
been demonstrated by, by many that it's possible to make a humanoid robot. The thing that the things that are uh, currently missing are uh, enough intelligence, to, enough intel intelligence for the robot to navigate the real world and do useful things um, without being uh, explicitly instructed. It, it, so, so the, the missing things are basically real world. Uh, intelligence and uh, scaling up manufacturing. Um, those are two things that Tesla is very good at and uh, so then we, we basically just need to design the, the uh, specialized actuators and sensors that are needed for a humanoid robot. Pe people have no idea, this is, this is going to be bigger than the car. Like I think one of the things that's going to be important is to have a localized ROM chip uh, on the robot that cannot be updated uh, over the air. Uh, where if you, for example, were to say, stop, 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 that would, if anyone said that, then the robot would stop, you know, type of thing. Um, and that's not updatable remotely. Um, I think it's going to be important to have safety features like that. And I do think there should be a regulatory agency for AI. I've said right. this for many years. I don't love being regulated, but I, you know, I think this is an important thing for public safety. The scientific method, which I very much believe in, where something is true to the degree that it is testably so, and, and otherwise, you're really just talking about, you know, preferences or, well, un untestable beliefs or that, you know, that kind of thing. So it ends up being somewhat of a semantic question where we are conflating a lot of things with the word intelligence. If we parse them out and say, are we headed towards the future where an AI will be able to outthink us in every way? then the answer is unequivocally yes. If you can't tell the difference, and this is sort of the, the Turing test, but think of a more sort of advanced version of the Turing test. If you're talking to a, d a digital superintelligence and can't tell if that is a computer or a human, like let's say you're just having a conversation over a phone or a video conference or something where it looks like a person makes all of the right uh, uh, inflections and movements and, and all the small subtleties that constitute a human, talks like a human, makes mistakes like a human, like the, at that, and, and you literally just can't tell, is this, are you video conferencing with a person or, a, or a, an AI? Might as well. Might as well. Be human. I think there's, there's a lot, a tremendous amount of investment going on in AI. Where there's a lack of investment is in AI safety. And there should be, in my view, a government agency that oversees anything related to AI to confirm that it is does not represent a public safety risk. Just as there is a regulatory authority for, just like the Food and Drug Administration, there's NHTSA for auto automotive safety, there's the FAA for aircraft safety. We generally come to the conclusion that it is important to have a government referee or a referee that is serving the public interest in, in ensuring that things are safe when when there's a potential danger to the public. Um, I would argue that uh, AI is unequivocally uh, something that has potential to be dangerous to the public and therefore should have a regulatory agency just as other things that are dangerous to the public have a regulatory agency. People in the AI community refer to the advent of digital superintelligence as a singularity. That That is not to say that it is good or bad, but it, that it is very difficult to predict uh, what will happen after that point and and that there's some probability it will be bad some probability it will be, it will be good we obviously want to affect that probability and have it be more good than bad my prime motivation which was you know kind of what what, what what do we do about ai like what do we do about artificial general intelligence uh if, if we have digital super intelligence that's you know just much smarter than any human how do we mitigate that risk um, at, a, at a species level, how do we mitigate that risk? Um, and then even in a benign scenario where the AI is uh, very, very benevolent, then how do we even go along for the, go along for the ride? How do we, we participate? The biggest limitation in going along for the ride and in aligning uh, AI, I think, is the is the, the bandwidth, the, the how quickly you can interact with the computer. So we are, we are uh, all already cyborgs in a way in that the, your, your phone and your computer are extensions of yourself. And if you, I'm sure you found like if you uh, leave your phone behind, uh, you, you find, end up tapping your pockets and, and it's like having missing limb syndrome. Like where, you know, the, the phone is, it is 
leaving your phone behind is kind of like a missing limb at this point. You're so used to interfacing with it. You're so used to being a de facto cyborg. Um, but but so, so what's the limitation on on a, on a phone or a, a laptop? The limitation is the, the rate at which you can receive and send information, especially the, 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 the speed with which you can send information. So if you're interacting with a phone, it's limited by the speed at which you can move your thumbs uh, or the speed at which you can talk into your phone. This is an extremely low data rate. Um, you know, maybe it's like 10, optimistically 100 bits per second, but a computer can, can communicate at uh, you know, gigabits, ter terabits per second. So this is the fundamental limitation that I think we need to address to mitigate the long-term risk of artificial intelligence um, and also just go along for the ride. I think AI is going to be incredibly sophisticated in 20 years. It seems to be accelerating and the, the tricky thing about predicting things when there's an exponential is that an exponential looks like it looks linear close up um, and, and but it's actually it's not linear so and, and AI appears to be accelerating um, from what I can see. Well, I had sort of a debate about something like, is AI accelerating or not? And the, the, like, he was saying, well, what's the y-axis? You know, if, you, if it's accelerating, um, you have t on the x-axis, but what's, what's the y-axis? I said, well, I thought about that. I think you could have a recursive y-axis so that uh, if, if, if at any point in time you, your predictions for AI are coming sooner or later, um, that, that actually would help define whether it's... Uh, accelerating or not. If you find your predictions are, are um, going further out or coming further or coming closer in, that that actually, you know, is, is one way to think of acceleration. Because like, because like, otherwise, what's the what's the qualitative or quantitative measure of, mm -hmm. of AI? In terms of getting excited about, it, I mean, it's like, uh, uh, I, I think we'll probably start seeing like more like truly cyborg activity, like. Mm human brain interface, like, like, like brain computer interfaces. Well, like I said, you know, AI and robotics will, will bring, um, bring out what might be termed the age of abundance. Um, other people have used this word. Um, and, and, and that this is my prediction will be an age of abundance um, for everyone. Um, I guess there's, uh, the, the dangers would be the artificial general intelligence or digital super intelligence uh, decouples from a, a collective human will and uh, goes in a direction that for some reason we don't like of uh, whatever whatever direction it might go you know that's what it, sort of the, the idea behind Neuralink is to try to more tightly couple a uh, collective human will to uh, the to, to digital uh, super intelligence um, and also along the way solve a, a, a lot of brain injuries and spinal injuries and that kind of thing. So even if it doesn't succeed in the greater goal, it will, I think it will succeed in, in the uh, goal of alleviating uh, brain and spine damage. Neuralink is, is to help solve uh, brain injuries and uh, existential risk with AI, love of humanity. Tesla's goal from, from when we started it has always been to accelerate sustainability. So that is still our primary goal by far. Uh, we have a secondary goal, which is to solve um, at least real-world intelligence as it applies to self-driving cars, mm -hmm. and then potentially, you know, with with uh, humanoid robots. Um, but you know, it's, so Tesla is in part an AI company, um, and increasingly an AI company, but it's still primarily a sustainable energy company. Um, I think. AI, what will AI do? I, I, I don't think we need AI to solve sustainability. Uh, that, that, is, that is happening. It might help us accelerate it. Um, but I think we should also be cautious about AI and, and just make sure that as we develop AI that it uh, is, um, you know, it doesn't get out of control and, and that, uh, that the AI helps make the future better for humanity. I think we should be more worried about AI safety than we currently are. Especially, you know, the, the future wars are really going to be, and we're seeing a taste of that within in Ukraine, uh, very much uh, drone wars. So, if, if your drones are better than their drones, then you won't, basically, that's what will happen. I also have mixed thoughts about AI. You better watch out for AI being a danger. Uh, but it's happening either way, so I 
guess if we have to do it, we can try our best to make sure it is a positive, you know, good, good AI. AI is going to be a very important part of the future. Um, Self-driving is obviously one of the functions. Um, and um, hopefully. <laughs> the reason I created Mutant Neuralink was um, long term as a risk mitigation for uh, digital superintelligence uh, in that if we are able to effectively um, achieve symbiosis uh, with digital intelligence then uh, we, we're sort of the collective human will is better able to steer things in a direction that we'd like uh, or, or even with benign uh, AI at least go along for the ride. Well I've said for a long time I think AI safety is a really big deal. Um, and we should have some regulatory agency that is overseeing uh, AI safety. But there is not yet currently any such thing. And, and just any, generally any kind of regulatory agency done by the government will usually takes years to put in place. Um, so, you know, I, after uh, the population collapse issue, I think AI safety is probably the, the second biggest um, threat to the future of civilization. Um, like I said, I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Um, I mean, Tesla is arguably the, the world's biggest robot maker because like, we have basically semi-autonomous semi cars that will ultimately be fully autonomous. Um, and we are building a humanoid robot that will be basically like, um, like, like the car, but with legs. Um, so, and I, I kind of uh, held off on doing that for a while because you know, I, was, I, I certainly don't want to hasten the AI apocalypse, but clearly with the, with the Boston Dynamics, and, and like this humanoid robots are going to happen, so um, they're really going to happen with or without Tesla, so it's like Tesla got a little bit more, I mean a lot more ability to ensure uh, robotic safety in AI, um, and I'll try my best to, to do that. One of the reasons for uh, World War III would be um, if one country has, or one place has advanced AI technology and other powers want it, uh, or they're worried about some country gaining uh, advanced AI that would, would uh, give them a strong advantage in war, then they may be tempted to uh, attack before the country that is developing strong AI has that uh, for use in, in weapons technology. With respect to AI and robotics, I always approach these things with some trepidation because uh, I certainly do not want to be play a hand in uh, anything that could potentially be harmful to humanity. Um, humanoid robots, they're clearly happening. I mean, look at like Boston Dynamics, they, the demonstrations are better every year. Um, so there will be humanoid robots. I mean, the rate of advancement of AI is very rapid. Even if Tesla stopped doing AI, then we're still on a track to develop uh, artificial general intelligence, um, many intelligence smarter than the smartest human. An optimist is a general purpose uh, sort of worker droid. Um, so the initial roles for optimists would be uh, in work that is uh, repetitive, boring, dangerous, that kind of thing. Um, basically work that people don't want to do unless they're paid to do it. The humanity has designed the world to interact with uh, a bipedal humanoid with two arms and you know ten fingers. So if you want to have a robot fit in and be able to do things that humans can do, it must be um, of roughly the same size and shape and capability.